Hey YouTube, welcome back. This is episode 4 and today we're going to be learning about GSAP Skull Trigger Animations. And on the Hero Space, we have the Text Split Animation and the next section, Scroll Triggered Animation of this heart. Text Reveal, Image Reveal with a, another image reveal but using a clippy uh, circle mask. All right, so let's go. Okay, there are a couple of things we need to do. First, let's head over to the GSAP uh, installation page. Uh, I'll leave a link down below. So you need to check off uh, scroll trigger under the, uh, the CDN tab and grab these two scripts. This one and this one. And I copied it. Let's go over to page settings in the bricks environment, custom code. Let's put it in the body for the script area. And the next thing is I need a script for the split type animation, that which I will show you very shortly. And it comes from this GitHub page uh, provided by uh, Luke PV. And uh, this is pretty awesome. Okay, so let's grab this script, copy. And paste settings again put it underneath the GSAP codes. And the last thing we want to do is connect to our code sandbox environment. Uh, okay, so let me just put a test script in there really quick. Save that. And let's connect it to Bricks um, script. So let's put that there. Is the path. Okay save it and let's head over to the front end make sure that test script reacts perfect test so everything's connected so uh, let's start uh, scripting yeah so by the way if you don't want to use the code sandbox text editor um, just feel free to use uh, bricks uh, page settings in the custom code area and you could actually code it right here. I have the path to code sandbox here. Let me just cut that out for a second. Um, yeah, so what you would do is you would just put a script tag, open and close. And then just put your GSAP codes here. And that would work perfectly fine. It's just a little cumbersome. Um, that's why I use code sandbox. Normally what I do is um, I code everything in the code sandbox when it's all approved and done, I grab all the codes, I copy it, and I normally come to here anyway to, to paste it in and then launch the site. So that's the workflow uh, generally I follow. So feel free to, to code directly here so you don't need to uh, sign up for an account at Code Sandbox if you don't want to. All right, so let's get going. Let me put that back. Okay, let me just quickly show you my HTML bricks setup for the hero section one. And I have a, uh, a display flex setup for this class, EP4 hero, uh, direction column, center center for the align axis, row gap of three REM. And I have a logo and I have a uh, heading text which is wrapped inside a div block and I'm using that as a mask, like so. If you go down to overflow, it's hidden. So that is for mask reveal technique, which I'll show you very shortly with the split text animation. And then below that, I have the rich text. Okay, so let's get these uh, animated. So if you head over, over to the GitHub page for the slip, split type, uh, scroll all the way to the bottom, it actually gives you a sample code, text animations with GSAP. So you could write this in context of uh, our example. But I want to show you a, a better way to write this using data attributes because this one is just targeting either your class or your ID. But I want to target um, data attributes, which will be much smarter for us to do, which I'll explain why as I write the code. So the first thing you want to do is, of course, as always, uh, set up a variable. And let's call this text 
anim equals and this is how we target the data attributes okay or declaring and targeting document uh, query selector query selector and then uh, inside this is where we're going to put in the data attribute and I want to give it a title uh, called a split text equals for the value of this attribute text and uh, we're gonna fill this out in the uh, bricks environment which I'll show you shortly and it'll make more sense so we just declared the name of um, data attribute and its value and then uh, we called it the variable name of text anim okay now let's put in the data attribute to the element that we're targeted so which would be the heading so let's go over to the attributes tab add attribute and uh, let's give it the same name that we declared uh, this would be called split hyphen text and the value was text and let's save it if you look at the github page again at the example now we need to write this line um, targeting instead of the class or the id to target our data attribute that we just declared okay so let's write that part now okay so what we do is let um, let's give it a title split type equals um, what did the document say oh yeah new split type right new split type and inside here we give it this variable name because you know we had this equal this data attribute so it's gonna target that okay so let's save it and let's head over to the front end refresh and of course there's no animation yet but let me open up the inspector really quick I want to show you something and if you look at the characters here it split uh, the split type uh, script had uh, split up the characters for us as you can see oops as you can see here um, it's individual letters like S C R O L L etc so the first part is done so now we need to tell GSAP to um, pick up the char C H A R to animate them however we wish so in the GSAP uh, JS file we're going to continue writing we're going to declare a couple of more variables so let's do let uh, characters oops characters equals um, we're gonna use let me go back to the they're using types as characters for chars so let's put chars in there then I'm gonna create another variable and this time I'm gonna call it this one will split up as words I'll show you uh, shortly what that does and then this comes from the documentation words so you could split up as individual characters like so or as a full words and I'll show you the difference between the two shortly okay okay now we declare some variables uh, let's do some fun stuff uh, animation stuff okay gsap dot from and uh, let's have this uh, grabbing it from this variable split type and then uh, we created these two variables and they're kind of acting as arrays and we could pass in through uh, here uh, we could either split it up as characters or words so in, in our instance I want to split up individual characters so let's put the characters in there and comma let's put it in squirrely brackets 
and this is all of the animation properties uh, let's do stagger and we learned this back in episode two i believe the stagger animation stuff so let's do amount put the 0 0.5 and let's have it from uh, let's have it from center and then let's do ease and let's do expo out and then as for I want it to come from uh, bottom up so let's do a y percent 100 so it should come from bottom and it should come up so let's save and check out the front end what it looks like there looking pretty good and uh, let me show you what happens so let's pass in uh, instead the uh, array of words let's save that and I'll show you what happens and it, it um, splits up the words if I had more than uh, so if I had several words here uh, it would actually split up um, words rather than individual characters okay but I want to bring it back to characters again so we split it up individually double check it refresh nice okay you viewers I want to see if you notice anything if you have a, a keen eye for this flaw that you're about to see let me do a hard refresh let's see if you could catch this did you see that there was a flash uh, in the beginning before the animation let me demonstrate that a little further if you go to the inspector again go to the network and let's do it as a, a fast 3g is pretty good so let me do a hard refresh again now as it loads see that html text loads first and then the gsaps uh, script gets injected now why is that? Because the GSAP code is positioned at the end of the body tag. So that means the HTML DOM elements gets loaded first, which are unstyled, and then the CSS takes over, and then the GSAP animation takes over. So therefore you see those flashes in the beginning of the animation. So how do we uh, fix that? One way is that you could select your heading element and you want to uh, hide it, right? So you don't want to show the uh, HTML text loading so one method is go to the filter and set the opacity to zero and then go to the GSAP you know you want to make it from two instead and then you know from uh, zero opacity to you know one opacity um, but the code could get much longer and messier this way so and all on top of that on top of that you cannot edit uh in when it's invisible in the page builder so you cannot style it so which is kind of uh, dumb in itself so let me get rid of this and i'll show you a better way the reason why we put the data attribute uh for this element like so so that we could make it visible in the design uh builder and uh, we could utilize a css and gsap to hide the element and reveal uh, accordingly so let me show you that now so we need to write a little bit of a custom uh, CSS uh, you could technically go to page settings and custom code and write your CSS uh, here but I'm using the advanced themer uh, plugin which is pretty amazing I highly recommend uh, you getting this uh, it really um, speeds up your workflow in building stuff so uh, you should get it anyway so I'm gonna write um, my code here uh, here uh, let's target our data attribute split text equals text and we also want to target uh, our characters 
So it was these guys, right? So it's char. So we need to grab the char. Let's go back. We also need to target what we just copied. And here, let's do visibility hidden. Actually, we don't need to write that. And let's save it. Now, what's cool about that is that if you look here in the builder, you could still stylize it because it's visible, which is really great. Now, if you go into the front end, refresh, it's invisible, which is pretty awesome. Now, we could use GSAP to reveal. And you can still design it in the page builder, which is pretty awesome. And that's the beauty of writing with uh, data attributes. So let's start continue um, coding here. So now what we want to do, since we have the um, element that we want to hide uh, successfully hidden, so we want to tell the browser that we want to um, have everything loaded and then proceed with the animation. So in order for us to do that, so we write function in it and then like so function in it and then we take all our animation choose up animation put it inside the function in it and then uh, let me just grab the snippet of code and put it at the very bottom like that it's basically just telling once everything's loaded the HTML uh, DOM elements and then trigger the GSAP uh, animation properties. That's all it is. Okay, let me make this a little bigger. Okay, close this panel. All right. Okay, now we need to uh, write here GSAP set and target text anim, which is targeting uh, the data attribute. And and here we need to give auto alpha of one. Okay, the reason for this is that it's coming from uh, zero opacity, meaning we had hidden it in the um, the CSS, so it's invisible. So we need to give it a uh, set of one. So we have to show it uh, to its full opacity. But from, we need to say that it's coming from opacity of zero. So we need to say uh, auto alpha <coughs> of zero. Basically, the auto alpha is used specifically for this type of situation to bring up a uh, element to uh, remove that flash in the beginning of the, the loading of the browser. Okay. Okay. Let's check out the front end. Let me just uh, hard refresh. You should not see any flash. Nice. And if we inspect it, uh, go to, um, let's just do it a fast 3G hard refresh. Loading, loading. doesn't flash which is great I think I'm going off the rails a little bit but um, I want to really explain to you this beauty of using data attributes so uh, let me give you one more benefit point why using data attribute is, is is really the way to go so let's say let me go back to the um, the page builder here in bricks uh, since we created a data attribute assigned to this heading like so we're going to do the same uh, to this guy here and just instead of writing a whole new code in gsap all we have to do is just add a data attribute which is split text and text as a value and you save it and um, currently the query selector is only applying to one element but if we put in query select to all this is going to apply 
to all of the all of the DOM element. Okay, so let me save that and go to the front end. Keep your eye on this area. They both do the same behavior. So that means wherever we put in that data attribute um, and the value, uh, where whichever element with the text will do the same behavior, which is really amazing. Finally, let's start the scroll trigger animation. Yes, I hope uh, you enjoy that split text stuff. Um, there's some really cool stuff that you can do with it. And I will um, show you some cool stuff with all the data attributes and uh, split text animation in the future videos. Okay, so that being said, let's get on to the skull trigger. So the first thing you want to do is uh, register the plugin. Register. Plugin. Scroll trigger. Done. Okay, then let's go back to Bricks Builder and let's scroll down to the second section, which is here. It's just a section element with uh, an image, which is an SVG heart that I set together. And it's just, you know, centered aligned with a flex box uh, aligned to the left. And uh, basically, what's going to happen is when you scroll down, when this uh, heart uh, comes into the viewport it'll animate accordingly so which i'll start coding that right now so back in code sandbox um, we want to add space here uh, to keep it within the function init uh, code set and as you can see make sure you put it inside this last uh, curly braces and then let's put in gsap uh, let's make it go somewhere and we need to target the heart and this is called EP4 heart let me copy that and target the heart and then put it in the curly braces uh, this is the animation properties let's say duration two seconds uh, let's do a rotation minus 360 degrees let's do a ease of uh, let's do power to out and I forgot to put it in the quotes there we go and then uh, let's do move it to the right uh, let's do a 70 V width Okay, let's just see what that looks like really quick. Okay, so it's saved. Let's go to the front end. Okay, so we've got the animation working. Okay, so if I refresh and I scroll down, what you don't see the heart animation. Well, that's because we didn't set a, a trigger um, target so let's do that right now so right after this line here so we're going to put in um, scroll trigger and inside still specifying the target so and that would be uh, specified by trigger and a class which would be ep4 heart that's the heart a class and then we want to start I'll explain this after I write it um, let's let me just put some values in there so top uh, let's do a bottom here and then let's do end let's do top bottom in a quote and put top and we need a little helper that GSAP provides us. It's called markers, and it gives us a uh, some sort of a marking for us to uh, measure our trigger points. Okay, so let's say markers true, and you'll see what I mean. Let's save that, and then go to the front end, and go back to the top, refresh. Now, when uh, as you can see the markers here uh, scroller ends and this is where the scroller trigger point starts 
and as the top of the heart enters into the viewport as soon as it hits the green part see that it animates so this is the top of the heart and bottom of the heart start at the end and when the start hits the scroller start as I specified in the code the animation is triggered and uh, let's adjust that a little bit instead of the start part starting at the bottom let's do it instead 75% from the top and the bottom will be 25% from the bottom uh, what's the percent uh, here let's save it and let's see how the markers look now as you can see the st starting point is 75% from the top and the end point is 25% from the top I think I said from the bottom before I meant from the top <laughs> yeah so from the top okay so now when I scroll as you can see the top of the animation of the heart as soon as it hits the scroller start boom the animation hits and there is a four uh, scroll events that you need to be aware of and they're called on enter on leave on enter back and on leave back so if you go to the front end again let me just do a quick refresh just means that on enter means when the uh, element comes into the scroll start that's on enter and when the element goes out after the scroll end that's on leave and then we have two more properties which is on enter back and on leave back so on enter back is when the object comes back in and then finally when <clears throat> the heart goes out to scroll start it's on leave back now with that in mind uh, let me add another additional notes here as comment and these are called event option so uh, on enter you could assign any of these events options to apply to any of these events here to scroll events so for example uh, we have for the event options play pause resume reset restart complete reverse and none these are all of the available options for you to play with and in order to uh, execute that you need to uh, put it in what's called a uh, toggle action actions and let's say on enter let's say we do play and on leave reverse let's just play around with this and on enter back hmm, let's do a reset to see what that looks like restart okay let's save that oh don't I forgot to add a comma okay now save let's see what that looks like Go to the front end let's refresh Okay, so we said uh, play, reverse, reset, restart, okay? So we do a play on enter and on leave, reverse, and then I think uh, we have a oh, reset so you won't see anything. And then when you leave, it does a restart. So yeah anyway you could play with um, a bunch of these things so but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say um, none none and uh, reverse so what's gonna happen with that uh, we fresh as I scroll down plays when on leave none none and then when you on enter leave it reverses then when you go back in place and reverses okay okay let me show you scrub i'll just write it first scrub true and you'll see this in many websites and this is called the scrubbing technique let me refresh as I scroll you see the heart gets attached to the the scroll wheel that you're doing it 
and then um, I set up um, two X position to 70 view width so when you hit the start it starts the animation it ends at 70 view width to on the X axis and it hinges to the scroll wheel so which is kind of nice but having a true uh, value it's very stiff in some cases you may uh, want to use this but if you want to give it a little easing effect you could put in something like 30 and let me refresh show you what that does and when you hit the scroll start see it does that little bit of uh, easing scrubbing which also is kind of nice yeah so that's scrub Okay, so back in Bricks Builder, uh, let's move down to the section three, which is the next section. And I want to create a uh, timeline animation sequence here. And um, let me show you how to trigger a timeline animation. For the heading, same thing as before with the div block, uh, creating a mask, acting as a mask. And I have an image grid here that contains uh, div block inside it is the image which is here and on the second uh, part of the grid uh, which is this guy here div block acting as an image and image inside mask meaning they all have um, overflow hidden like so so whenever there's a mask it's all overflow hidden okay now let's um, trigger our timeline animation by creating a uh, timeline for that section so let's give it a very old name a uh, variable name called uh, this is section 3 section 3 anim okay and then just like we learned in episode 3 uh, you, we start with gsat dot timeline and uh, put it in the parentheses scroll the brackets and uh, we want to put in scroll trigger. So this is, um, we need to target the element here. Scroll trigger. And then we want to specify what we're going to be triggering, which is, and then we want to start top 80% and end bottom let's do 20% and then let's do our markers true because we need a little helper there and let's comment out the prior because it'll get chaotic with tons of markers there we need to toggle actions right toggle actions and we could do all this stuff there but there was one thing I want to do I want to set a variable and because we are constantly going to be repeating this thing throughout I'd rather uh, put this as a variable so we don't have to write this over and over again so about here beginning of the other scroll trigger I want to create a variable called toggle playback um, actions and in here let's put in this values like so and then all we have to do is take this variable and Put it here like so and like so and just to double check let's look at the front end at the heart to make sure it's working yes so it is working should go back perfect okay now uh, looking at this section as you can see now uh, I specify the trigger point of this container here, which starts here, and end of that container is down here. So, uh, so basically, I want when this start hits the scroll start here, I want it to start animating stuff, and for the heading for the two images, 
and when it ends it's going to do something similar to the heart animation okay so let's start putting in the, the animation properties okay let's add a space here and um, let's target this animation timeline called sec 3 anim we defined earlier and let's do from so are we animating the uh, the heading first and let's target the heading okay so we go back to the bricks let me copy it I did a modifier class on this heading because the the main heading which is here is is really big so I did a modifier so I could make it smaller so let me grab that modified class <coughs> let's put it there and let's start putting the animation properties let's do let's have it come from above minus 100 percent let's do duration of one second and let's do an ease of power for out let's have a quick look in the front end refresh okay when you scroll into that container section boom there so it triggered the heading so that works let's move on okay now we're going to animate these two images in using that mask technique that we learned in episode three and let's do the same to here okay well first we need to target the images so let me grab that class copied and let's position it here and we're going to be using uh, from to technique as we learned in episode three and let's target the class we just grabbed and so we're gonna put in uh, the from uh, properties so this will be the clip path let me just grab that really quick let's put it in here let's paste it in there and then the original um, position uh, original size would be large and then it's going to reduce down to uh, down to back to one so let's do a clip path on this guy as well and then let's put in some values that we grabbed from clippy like so let me just save that okay let's go back and then uh, let's scale it back down to one uh, duration as one second and let's do an ease of power two out and let's do a stagger animation of um, let's do this time each of 0 0.2 let's save it and it looks like this so let's give it a look let's have a look in the front end refresh good so far triggers trigger animation should trigger right about now and then triggers yes everything's working great and then uh, the other part is is coming in I want it to come in a little sooner so I want to put a comma here and uh, again we learned this in uh, episode three where I wanted to come in at the same time as the as this animation but 0.5 second later so let me save that and let's try it again refresh triggers triggers and triggers yeah that looks pretty good let's move on to the next one okay for the very last section that we're gonna uh, trigger uh, is the section four and here I just have a 100 uh, VH uh, in height 
And inside it, I have a div block overflow uh, hidden on the on the class. And inside it, there is a image which have a object fit cover and width and height of 100%. And let's get animating this section. Okay, just like before, um, we need to create a variable for this timeline. So let section, let's call this four, and then pick a section four, and you could title this whatever you like. And gsap.timeline, and inside it, the curly braces, and this is where we want to tell this animation sequence will contain scroll trigger. And inside we need to define the target. And again, we need to get the class. And we're going to target, let's say, let's target the mask. So we've got the class, I copied it and pasted it here, and let's start, okay, and end it at, and for the toggle action, actions, uh, let's put in that variable that we defined earlier so we don't have to type so long. And uh, let's do our markers, save that, and then there's a markers I put here. Let's blank that out for now. Okay, so the scroll trigger is set. Okay, now let's animate. So we want to grab this one, uh, the variable name for the timeline. And we're going to do from two. And we're going to target uh, this time the image, which is the girl surfing. And let's put it in there. Now target is set. And uh, let's put in animation properties. Save it. And... Uh, I've also done this in the Clippies. Let me show you this in Clippy, what I did. I grabbed, um, where's that circle? Oh, right here. I basically grabbed this one here. And I modified it slightly to this. Okay, so basically, this is at 50%. I wanted to, uh, start from a smaller circle so if you bring it down like that as you can see the percentage goes smaller so that's what i did in my code so i made it at two percent i wanted to start from something that small to a hundred percent so let me just grab this guy and let's enlarge it to a hundred percent and let's see what I mean like that. It's at 50, but you could actually um, fill up this entire area. So if you uh, do 100%, then the circle is going to go beyond the viewport. It's going to fill up the image. Okay, so let's go back. I actually wanted to start from uh, scale. 1.5 maybe 1.5 let's try 1.5 okay and then two seconds then ease ease out and scale back to one Save. Okay, let's have a look in the front and let's uh, cross our fingers that everything is working. Looking good. 
Nice. Okay. Actually, it kind of it was a little too abrupt. I wanted to have a little delay. Let's do a delay of one second. Let's try it again. Refresh. Yeah. Well, that's the end of the tutorial uh, for now. I'll have more coming in the future. And um, sorry for my lack of energy today. I'm a little under the weather. But I hope you like this tutorial. And uh, please like and subscribe and uh, help me with the algorithm. And I look forward to see you in the next episode.